I believe that the, the present moment is very, very important and it's very powerful. And you should be grateful for every single moment that we have. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Within the Game. My name is Aaron Wexler. I'm your host, and I'm here with the one and only Timothy Schultz. Timothy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Aaron. I really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. So Within the Game podcast is all about uh, interviewing people and expressing tools to stay inspired. And I'm really inspired by you. Timothy, you were the Powerball winner in 1999, and now you're the host of the Lottery Dreams and Fortune podcast on YouTube. Uh, your website is timothy-schultz.com. That's Schultz with an S-C-H. Once again, Timothy, thank you for being here, buddy. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, with every guest, I jump right into this question, and I it's the same question for everybody. So I'm just going to give it to you. What does inspired living mean to you? Inspired living. To me, inspired living means understanding that anything is possible to a very large extent and understanding what you want to achieve and go to that level and try to get to that level and think in terms of what do you want to achieve and then go after it and, and achieve it because anything is possible to a, to a very large extent. And, you know, you, you introduced me as a lottery winner, which I am, but you absolutely don't need to win the lottery to pursue your dreams. And I, I feel that in your life, you can accomplish practically anything. And that, that inspires me because I see other people that are succeeding at different things that I want to succeed at. And so my mindset goes to, well, if they can do it, I can do it. And so of that, I love that. Yeah. You know, and I was telling you before we started that I'm inspired by your story because number one, first of all, I'm a little jealous of you, you know, of, of lottery winners. Every time I drive by a gas station and I see those big numbers, I actually get uh, excited by those numbers. And I, I get, uh, I have this, like, I have this sense that I'm going to win too. I've always had that sense. And I know you talk about that on your podcast. I'm a big fan of your podcast and I'll link it uh, to, to this once it comes out, but I would love for you to just share a little bit of your story to, to some of the people that are, are listening that may not know you and are kind of like, you know, why is Aaron having a lottery, a lottery winner on this, uh, this podcast? So if you could just kind of share a little bit of your story of, of winning and, you know, take it from there. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So way back in the day in 1999, it, it makes me feel feel kind of old, but I was very young then. I was, I was um, 21. And when I was 21 years old, I won the Powerball, uh, which was 28 million. I didn't walk away with 28 million for a number of reasons, but it was still life-changing. And it's one of the biggest, most surreal things that's ever happened to me. And it's it was just incredible. And I, prior to one of the things I talk about quite a bit is this notion of visualizing, dreaming about something before it happens. Because for myself, I had a, a very vivid dream a few months prior to winning that I had won the lottery. And so I believed that I was going to win and, and I could go into depth about all that, but I believe that I was going to win and then, and then I won. And some people think that that's just coincidence. And a lot of people think that it's not. And, but it, it was very surreal when I won. And the, like, the day that I purchased the ticket, I, I strongly believed after seeing the numbers that that particular ticket was going to win. And I went out and played a game of cards with some friends after work. First of all, I sold the ticket to myself and then I went out and played a game of cards with some friends and I am partially colorblind. It was a color-coded card game. So I can't see certain shades of magenta, which is you know some of the purples in, in that sort of area. And it was a color-coded card game and I had to guess the, the colors and I won almost every time. And Maybe that's just coincidence too, but I mean, I didn't even, I couldn't even see the colors and I won almost every time. And I kept telling people, I'm going to win, I'm holding the winning ticket. And, and then it won. And the next day 
I found out that I had won. I had sold the ticket to myself, and it was just a crazy, crazy, one of the craziest things that, that's ever happened to me. Yeah. And and after that happened, of course, I mean that's just the first a glimpse into the first part of the story, but it really, really turned my life upside down. I mean, it can really, really change people's lives. So, wow. Wow. You know, and I just, I wanted you on this podcast because I, I'm inspired, not just by winners, right. But it, whether it's in sport or in life and business and in a game, you know, but I think everything's a game, right. Everything. I think life's a game. So the people that play to win that those people inspired me. And so you obviously played to win and you, you and you won. And um, I want to know how it felt like right in that moment, because, hmm. you know, <laughs> like I told you, I've visualized myself winning. And I think a lot of people play that game for fun. What if I won? How would it feel? What would I do? How did it feel for you? And what did you do first? Hmm. Well, for myself, the moment that I found out that I won, well, first of all, my, my father, I was living at that point in time was living in my parents' basement and my father received a voice message that I had sold the winning ticket because I was working at a gas station. I sold it to myself. And so my boss had called the house and said, he explained that, you know, kind of frantically that someone sold the winning ticket. And so my dad knew that I played from time to time and he came down and started banging on the door and he's like, Tim, Tim, get up to did you sell, did you buy a Powerball ticket last night? And I said, and I thought to myself, yes, I did. And I told everyone I was going to win and I believed that I was going to win. And now, you know, my dad is waking me up, banging on the door, telling me this, and it was just crazy. And so I started freaking out, looking everywhere for this ticket. And I wasn't the most organized person at that time, like a lot of people that are 21, but I know some 21 year olds that are very organized. So not to go against that but I looked everywhere there were there were papers everywhere and I found it it was all it was in a ball kind of scrunched up and I unraveled it and ran upstairs and compared the numbers to the numbers in the newspaper because the internet wasn't what it was what it is now the internet was completely different and so I looked at it in the newspaper and my father was there and we kind of we both compared the numbers and looked at it and it, it was just, they all matched. They all lined up. It was so surreal. And we just started, you know, hugging and sort of jumping up and down like, like little kids in a candy store. And it was just really crazy. Wow. I, mean, I was just, it's like, what are we going to do? You know, right. All these thoughts go into your mind. It's, it's <sighs> exhilaration like I've rarely felt in my life, the level of exhilaration. It's wow. really, really crazy. Man. But, and on top of that, you know, I really believed that I was going to win the night before and I told everyone that I was going to win. So it's sort of like an extra slap in the face. Like this just happened to you. Like, and I don't know. Talk about manifesting. And, and we are going to talk more about manifesting. Um, but let's talk about, telling everybody that you were going to win because what that reminds me of is champion mindset you know in sport which is my background you know speaking out your desired result is very powerful right telling telling your coach we're going to win the game telling your teammate we're going to win this game telling um uh, just if maybe you're not an athlete maybe it's just in life i'm going to be successful right like that that speaking out of your desired result can you talk about where that came from. Cause I, in, in my show, I talk a lot about mm. the difference between confidence and arrogance and you just seem like really confident, like in your, I'm going to win. I'm just telling everyone I'm going to win the, lot the lottery. Right. Mm. So yeah, just talk, talk a little bit about like that, that speaking it out. Sure. Well, so I worked pertaining to the lottery. I worked at the gas station and so I sold countless numbers of tickets all the time and so I saw people constantly it was on my mind quite a bit and after I had had the dream about it I honestly believed that it was really really likely that it was probably going to happen because I had had other dreams that were similar not about the lottery but about other things that had come to fruition that had happened 
And it was the same type of dream. And so I felt that, look, this is probably going to happen. And I just kept telling people and people thought some people just, I mean, most people shrugged it off and they're uh-huh. just like, yeah, whatever. Right. <laughs> but uh, I, I just felt that it was a fun, I, I honestly believed it, but I also just liked telling people that it was, mm-hmm. I believed it was true. But to your point of, of speaking it out, I believe that there is power in that with, with anything. It doesn't have to be the lottery. Right. You know, anything in life, I think that makes it a little more real, maybe in your mm-hmm. subconscious and in your, in, you know, what you want to achieve. If you, if you speak it out, a lot of people talk about writing things out, mm-hmm. you know, if right. you have, if you have desires of things you want to achieve right out, I want to achieve this, and, you know, in the present tense, I am this, I want to achieve this. What does this feel like? And that's, that's very real. A lot of people do speak it out. So, and it's one yeah. thing I did, I wasn't intentionally thinking, <clears throat> I didn't have the first clue of what the law of attraction was, what visually, you know, I didn't know anything about that stuff. I just knew from my experiences at that point in time that I had had dreams about things before they had happened. And it was the same type of dream. And so it convinced me that it, that it was going to happen. Man, and I, I love it. Yeah. And I don't think that your show is real skeptical, but there are people from time to time. I mean, you know, some people are skeptical. It's just, if you've never experienced something like that, some people are skeptical. And so I just always like to say that I respect everyone, whether you believe that it was a coincidence or not, but I think it's, I've spoken with a lot of lottery winners. I've interviewed a lot of lottery winners on my YouTube channel and the majority of them that I've met had similar experiences, not a dream necessarily, although some of them have had dreams, but they've had things that have happened to them or whereby they believed that it was going to happen. And then it happened. I just interviewed someone the other day that won over a hundred million dollars and she strongly believed that it was going to happen. And she, in fact, said, you know, this was the law of attraction. And that's what she believes. And I'm not claiming all of the answers for my own experience. But the more I learn about this type of thing, it's just fascinating. Yes. Yes. And it's fascinating to me, too. And um, I'm a believer in the law of attraction. I, I'm a spiritual person. I think that, you know, everything is attraction. It's an attraction based universe. Um, so I, I do believe that there was that force involved um, with your experience. But I would like to talk about dreaming. Mm-hmm. Now, dreaming for me, um, it's an important piece of the puzzle when it comes to staying inspired, which is, again, the main theme of what I'm doing with my project. And my forthcoming book is, is about that, is about staying, staying inspired. Um, I would like you to, to talk about the experiences you had in the dream. Because you, you, you've mentioned that a couple of times, you've had this dream of winning. Was it specific? Were, was it like uh, more of a feeling? Was it more pictures and, and visuals? Can you talk a little bit about the dream? Yeah, absolutely. So at that point in time, I was living not at my parents' house, at a different, different place in an efficiency, which for those of you that don't know that might be watching or listening this, it's basically a apartment that's one big room that has the kitchen and everything. It's all the same room. So, I mean, it was, it's a first world problem, right? It's not like it's bad. It's, it was a nice place, but Mm -hmm. it was just this little place and I was sleeping on an air mattress and I was sort of struggling for money. I wasn't on the street or anything like that, but you know, I wasn't wealthy by any means. And I was working 40 to 60 hours at a gas station, just trying to put myself through college. And I, at that particular day, I was feeling pretty down on my luck. And so I went to sleep on this air mattress, really sort of seeking uh, hope and inspiration from what I believe to be, you know, at that point in time, I don't know what I would call it, but you know, the universe or some people call it God, just some, this thing that I believe that we're all connected to. And I just sort of put myself out there in my head and just sort of felt like I'm looking for inspiration and hope, you know, just relaxed. And I had this dream that 
I had already won the lottery. It had already happened. So I didn't see the balls dropping. I didn't see specific numbers. I, I just had this knowing that it, it had already happened. And the first thing that popped into my head was that I get to pay my vehicle off the debt that I owed. And I was so happy. I was so ecstatic, just happy about that because it was just so thrilling. And I woke up uh, and it took me a little bit to understand that I hadn't won because it was that real because I really felt like I had won in that dream. And it took me a little bit to understand that I had not. And so since that time, I believed that it was going to happen, but it's not the only dream that I've had about of that nature about I, it was about the lottery, but not about things that pertain to, to life. And I just felt like it was going to happen. Interesting. I, I, I love that. I, I'm so fascinated by that. I just think that dreaming is such a, it's a fascinating thing because do you, actually, let me ask you this. Do you think that you can directly influence your dream, like your dreams at night before you go to sleep? Can you like set an intention? And absolutely. Then, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, you absolutely can. I have several times and I'm sure there's plenty of other people watching this that have. I, for myself, if I feel like there's something I want to know or something that I want help with, I'm a very spiritual person, so mm -hmm. I pray fairly often. And if I feel like I want an answer to something, I ask. And I usually get it. And it might not be what I expect to hear or what I want to hear, but I usually get it, the, an answer. Mm. So so I, I feel that, and it usually comes to me in, in the dream state, but if you really want to get into dreams, there are, of course, other types of dreams where you can manipulate the dream. You might know that you're dreaming and you can, that's called lucid dreaming, where you can, you know, take actions in the dream. You know that you're dreaming, but you're still doing it and you're sort of floating around. And I love lucid dreaming, but that's not what this is. This is more just asking for something and then receiving a message within the, within the dream. And I completely believe in this because it's happened to me many, many times. I just interviewed a dream decoder, um, spiritual expert about this type of thing the other day. And it, it's, it's very, very interesting to me. Yeah, man, me too. We could talk a lot about dreams. Um, I want you to talk for a second about odds, right? Because I've noticed you, you know, I've, I've heard you talk about that a, a few times on your show and a lot of people get caught up in the odds of winning the lottery and how it's like very low odds. It's improbable. You have more a higher chance of getting struck by lightning or getting hit by a meteor, you know, but when it, when it comes to dreams and pursuing your dreams, right? Because, you know, it doesn't have to be about the lottery. It could be about anything, right? Like for my audience, you know, a lot of my, a big part of my audience are athletes. And for a lot of us as athletes, we want to get to the top. We want to get to the next level. And that's a big part of our dream. The odds might be stacked against us, but I would like to hear from you about pursuing the dream, regardless of odds. Yeah. Well, I believe that practically anything is possible. And one of the major things that stops people from pursuing and achieving their dreams is, I mean, there are a few things, but one is fear, fear, mm -hmm. disbelief. You know, those things are very common for people. Reasons you might, or reasons that you make in your head where you can't achieve something. And I believe that a lot of that, you know, your reality is what you're sensing. So if you can change that to believe that you can achieve something, then you are so much more powerful. I, I just, the other day, I started, not the other day, but <laughs> within the last year, I started Muay Thai mm. um, and I love it. I love it so much, but I got to a level where I was competing against, not competing, that makes me feel like I'm fighting other people, but sparring with other people. And it was very intimidating at first to jump over the, I had a fear of getting in there with another human being instead of a punching bag 
and, and getting in there and just this fear of not being good enough or not being able to, you know what it is? A lot of it has to do with the ego, mm-hmm. I think. And the ego can really hold you back. And so it's this fear of maybe not being on the same level as other people, it's all these things that are nonsense, but it's your ego. And if you can get over that and just look at it like, you know, other people are at this level where you want to get to. They didn't start out at that level. They're at that level for a reason. And it self-belief, I think, is very, very powerful. And you can really, really move mountains if you believe. Belief is, is one part of it. You know, have a strong desire, believe, and then be persistent and go after it. I mean, Gandhi defeated an entire army, arguably, without firing a single bullet. And look at what Martin Luther King did and all, and look at, you know, a lot of the star athletes historically. And, you know, I just think human beings are capable of incredible, incredible things. When you believe you're persistent and you, you go after it and you can separate your ego from what you are trying to achieve and just do it. And so that's what well I said. Think. Well said. Um, how how do we increase our self belief? Is it through uh, meditation? Is it through self talk? You know, uh, um, it's a big part of I I believe that a big part of how we can increase our self belief is through positive self talk and being aware, right, and getting into meta awareness. Um, and emotional management, but I'm rambling. You, I, I'm, I'm asking you, how do you suggest as a tool for any list, anyone listening to this, for them to increase their self-belief? Mm. For myself, I am very spiritual. And if I feel like I, if I recognize that that's what might be holding me back and I, I want more self-belief then I, I pray for that. And I, I visualize that. And I ask what I consider to be God, which I believe is something that we're all in the sense that I'm using that word is that I believe that we're all connected. And I believe that anything and everything is possible through that. And I believe that if you ask for things, then you can, uh, you can achieve those to a, to a very large extent. Does that answer your question? It does. I love the idea of asking. I feel like, um, you know, we could, we could, I guess, call it praying, but I like the idea of asking because asking is an art form, right? Um, you have to get very clear on what you want prior to the ask, right? Yeah. Yeah. And some people, some people that are really into the the law of attraction will even say that you should, you know, I've seen people say that you should demand these things. You know, I am this, please help me get to the, you just open the door. You, you lead the way. I mean, that's what I, I believe that it's not just asking it is asking, but it's also knowing that you will, that you can accomplish those things. It's not just asking and then just, oh, I really hope. Hope is very powerful. And I'm not just, you know, it's hard for me. I'm not just talking about the lottery here yeah. because that's not really fair for me to, to say someone to someone that if you're hoping to win the lottery that you can't win the lottery because you, you can win the lottery. So this is not really, I'm just talking about in life in general sure. that you can achieve practically anything and when you if you pray or visualize that sort of thing and ask for help then also i think it's important to understand that not just ask but know that it can and will happen because it's possible and if if you have the faith and the desire and the persistence and the connection, I mean, maybe you don't have a connection, 
you don't believe maybe you're an atheist or whatever i completely respect that and so i'm not telling people how they should be but i believe that to a large extent anything and everything is possible through our energy mm. i love that man i agree so much um I want to talk more about that and I want to get into the power of the subconscious mind in a second. But before we do, let's just talk about the money, right? Because, you know, for me, when I hear your story and I think about what it might feel like for myself to, you know, all of a sudden be in charge of, of all that money, see those zeros in my bank account. Um, I'm just so curious about that. And I don't want to spend too much time on that because I want to get back to the, the subconscious mind stuff. But can you just talk about you know, manning, managing that kind of money, you know, um, from all of a sudden just getting it. I think, you know, like, I think you were talking about sudden wealth syndrome in a, in a recent episode and just, um, yeah. Could you just touch on that and, and expand on how you were able to just like, like, like get off the wow factor, be like, Oh my God. And get into like the, okay, here's what I got to do. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. So if you went the lottery or you win a large prize, how it is for most people anyway, your exhilaration goes through the roof. It is insane. But then it dips and goes back to a level that's pretty close to where you were before. That happens to a lot of people and that happened to me. And I had to figure out what to do. And in fact, before I even did anything, before I came forward publicly, I had to get attorneys and financial advisors because where I lived, you couldn't claim a prize anonymously. And well, even if in retrospect, regardless of whether you have the option to remain anonymous or not, but especially if you have to claim it publicly, you should have your ducks in a row and you should know you should get a financial advisor and probably an estate attorney and some other people, but I would say financial advisor is very, very important because for almost all lottery winners, most people are not wealthy in, in that ballpark anyway, having that anywhere close to that much money prior to winning. Some people do, most people do not. And so what are you going to do? Unless you are educated on how to deal with that sort of thing, you need to know how to deal with that sort of thing. And so I hired some people that, knew more than I did that were more educated than I was. And, and it's just very important to understand because whether you have 1 million or 5 million or a hundred million, you have to live within a means and within a budget and you have to understand what that is. And you have to understand what your goal is. Is your goal to grow the money? Is your goal to live off of the money? What you don't want to do is just spend and spend and spend like it just came to you like nothing or you'll be broke um, very fairly quickly, which does happen to some people, unfortunately. But with sudden, sudden wealth syndrome is a different topic that I, I did make a video about that a while back, but it's more of a psychological term. I didn't even know what it was prior to, prior to winning, but it basically is a psychological term and there are different aspects after you win the lottery for some people when they come into sudden wealth that they didn't have before, they might have people coming out of the woodwork asking for money, which right. was the, which was the case for me. And I felt a sense of guilt even for having won for a little bit because I couldn't help all the people that I wanted to help or I would be in financial trouble. And so I, I understood that thanks to the financial advisors, but my, the people that were asking for money didn't understand that. And of course I felt bad because you just want to help everyone out. And sure. for myself, after I won, I was like, Oh, I can do anything. It's like having this magic wand where you can do practically anything if you win the lottery. And that might be true to an extent, but you, there's still a means and that can really vary. Your means can really vary, but there is a means. And on top of that, I had some relationships that were ruined and some, some formerly close relationships that were ruined. It was, it was very difficult. And I was 21 years old at the time, which I'm not saying there's I mean, I completely am pro people that are 21 or younger winning the lottery. That's okay with me. But I just feel like there were a lot of people, more people even that probably came that wanted money from me because of my age and they thought that they could take advantage of me. 
So right. that was that was my experience, and I learned a lot from it. And I kind of learned who are my real friends, who really loves me, and who doesn't, and who's just out for themselves. And I learned a lot of life life lessons from it. Um, so some of that was really painful, but I I feel that it made me a better person. I feel that it made me understand people, humanity a little bit better, money a little bit better, about how it affects different people and how it can affect relationships and disparity as well. Because, yeah. uh, you know, I've seen sort of both sides of it. Yeah, no, um, that's great. Thank you for sharing all that. Um, you know, I want to, I want to move into the power of the subconscious mind and specifically your interview with Mark Houghton. Am I saying his name right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah he's awesome. Um, and let, let's get back to that spirit, spirituality stuff because that's the the main kind of meeting point that I, I really relate to you. And I think a lot of a, a majority of my audience will relate to that as well. Um, the power of the sub, subconscious mind. So we talked about dreaming and we talked about pursuing your dreams. And we talked a little bit about that self-talk. But can you talk a little bit more about that and, and maybe when it came to the lottery or maybe now as you, you know, you pursue your, you know, your, uh, your podcast and your, you know, your other projects, you know, what does that mean to you? The power of the subconscious mind. I think it's, I mean, I'm just constantly astonished by it. I'm, I'm constantly learning more about it. I don't claim to be an expert other than my own experiences, but I find it so fascinating that, I mean, I strongly believe that we are all connected and I believe from most of my experiences have come through dreams as, as I've mentioned, but not only dreams, but I believe that we're all connected. And I've, I've met some people that I believe are very gifted psychics and remote. I just interviewed a remote viewer, a renowned remote viewer who saw this. I mean, this is, he's been on national news several times, but he saw this bombing happening in London um, shortly before it happened and, and some other things. And I just find the whole thing, where does that come from? Where does this right. information come from? And with, with one thing that Mark Houghton talked about, you mentioned him yeah, and some other people talk about this as well, is that we have our conscious, our subconscious and the, what they some people refer to as the super conscious. So this level above that. So it's not just the subconscious, but I think the subconscious is very powerful too. It's sort of ingrained, you know, where you believe if you exercise, you do the same exercise long enough, you do Muay Thai long enough, you do volleyball long enough, you're going to get that ingrained in your subconscious where you're just going to be doing things without even thinking about it because you've done it a million times. It's repetition. It's belief. It's, it's into your energy. You're going to be dreaming about it. Right. So I think the, the subconscious is very powerful and you, and you can change it too. If you want to get into, to something new, then you can train it to do something else by repetition and thinking about something differently. And that's where a lot of the law, law of attraction people are, are into that. And I believe that there's a lot of power in, in that, in the fact that you are visualizing something, you're putting it out there, even if you say it out loud and, and then you go after it and do it again and again, and believe that it is, that it is not mm. that it, not that it will be someday in some other universe, this is it. This is our reality, the present tense. I believe, I believe that the present is very, you know, there are quantum physicists, not to get too crazy. Anymore, no, let's go I'm there. Just very fascinated. Go for it. <laughs> I'm just very fascinated in all this stuff, but yeah, me too. You know, there plenty of people will argue that there is no time. And I find that very fascinating. And I find it especially fascinating because I have dreamed about things before they've happened. And I know plenty of other people that have had experiences about things before they've happened. And so where does that information come from? And there are quantum physicists who do believe that there is no time, not in the sense of, I mean, your boss probably isn't going to believe you, but I really find that 
concept very very interesting yeah like i don't know how how else <laughs> i i've had dreams about people before i've met them and how does that happen i don't know so okay so you mentioned a couple of things there that i want to touch on so you mentioned uh there is no time for athletes for coaches even for entrepreneurs um we need to all learn how to be here now right like in that present moment not thinking about the past or the future but just being as enthralled as we can in the present moment right i think that's what you're talking about when it's when you're talking about no time that's what i think about i think about right here right now you know and the more that we can um practice that the more that we can get into the zone right which is another topic of what i like to ask my my guests about which is mm. the flow or the zone have you experienced being in the flow or the zone absolutely i, I am a believer 100 percent in that um, I have had, I, I'm a strong believer in that. I've even just doing this YouTube channel that I'm doing and this podcast that I'm doing, I, I feel that sometimes I often get into this flow, but that aside, I feel that in all aspects of life, you can get into the flow and it, it just feels differently. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're, you're in the moment and it's a very powerful, powerful feeling. I, I don't quite necessarily understand it all. I just believe, like, I feel, <laughs> I feel it. And it's the same thing with, I keep bringing up Muay Thai, but it's the same thing where you're in this flow of doing these movements. It's, it's almost like a dance, but it's not, it's not something you're just thinking about each movement. It just comes to you because you're in the moment. Yeah. And I guess back to the lottery thing, I felt that that particular day that I did win, I felt that I was really in the moment. And I feel that way about a lot of, a lot of times in my life. And it's, it's a different feeling. And I believe that is what the, the flow is. And there's a lot of star athletes too. You know, look at like Michael Jordan, when he would just like touch a ball and it just goes completely doesn't touch anything goes through the net he's just i believe that he was just in the flow so many times and that's just one example but it's fascinating and is the flow something you can practice or does it just come hmm. that's a good question for i mean i never intentionally said i want to get into the flow i just feel that it just comes for me, but mm. you know, it also, it comes from, but these are things that I've, that I've done. And I've set my intention to be, to be in the moment. And just like my intention right now is to have fun and, and have a fascinating conversation and just put it out there. And I feel that the moment, the present moment is so powerful. That doesn't mean never think about the future it's important to think about the future, to plan, to visualize, to be persistent and to pursue your dreams. All those things really, really matter. But I think what matters most is your present state of mind. Because, I mean, look at, I think it was Rocky three and Rocky was, no, Clubber Lane. Who was it? It's either Apollo Creed. I'm mixing up my Rockies. Anyway, someone was training Rocky. And they said, there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. And there is no tomorrow, I believe, that to a large extent, that you should, I hate to <laughs> pull Rocky in there, but I believe that the, the present moment is very, very important and it's very powerful. And you should be grateful for every single moment that we have because you could be gone tomorrow. I, I don't believe that people pass away. I don't believe in death necessarily, but there are no guarantees in, in terms of this life. And I feel that this moment is very important. Well said, brother. Um, you just mentioned gratitude. How did winning make you more grateful? It made me very grateful for 
I mean, obviously for the, for the money, uh, because I didn't take that for granted for, for a second, made me very grateful for financial freedom, made me very grateful for even the relationships that were ruined because I learned more about those people and how they thought of me and life in general. I learned about disparity. Like I can empathize with, you know, I think that's one thing that it, it did. I've never really fully thought about this out loud. So sorry if I'm rambling here. No, it's okay. I feel that perhaps it made me more empathetic towards people that have money and people that don't, because I could kind of see both sides of it. And for some people, if you are down on your luck, then you might have a negative opinion of people that are wealthy or people that wealthy might have a negative opinion of someone on the street. You know, it it goes both ways, but I feel that people, and I believe this prior to winning the lottery that people are people and I love everyone, but I think it really cemented the fact that, that that is true. And just because there's disparity doesn't mean that people aren't people and that we should treat each other with, with respect because your monetary value does not equate to your, your worth or your dignity. Mm. Wow. I want to ask you about vibrational escrow. Do you know what I mean by that? Uh, no. Can you explain? It's a term that I recently just discovered through Abraham Hicks. Are you familiar mm. with Abraham? Yes. Yeah, the teachings of Abraham. Um, so they talk a lot about vibrational escrow. And mm. you, as a spiritual person, you know, which we, we share that, um, as spiritual people, we want to increase our vibrational escrow, which basically to me means your energy, your internal energy, your, your vibe, you know, um, could you just, I don't know, just digest that and take that. Like, what does that mean to you? And and how do you increase your vibrational escrow? Hmm. Well, I've never heard that term so going off of the way you just explained it how to i mean for myself when i pray prayer to me is a form of meditation and i feel that that really increases my energy by quite a bit because i believe that we're i believe that we are connected to something larger than ourselves we're all, for example, I just interviewed this remote viewer that I was speaking about the way he explained it to me, which I think is very interesting is that he thinks of us as we are like computers hooked up to the internet. So the internet is there and we have it running through us, but we're not just a computer and we're not just the internet. We're like the internet is running through us and we're these computers, but we're part of something much greater. And I thought that was an interesting way to, to think about that. But for myself, when I pray and I meditate, it really, I feel that I'm much more energized and connected to something, to what we are all a part of, in, in my opinion. And I believe that because of that, there are no boundaries. There is nothing stopping anybody because we're already a part of everything. Mm. Does that make sense? A hundred percent, man. And it's a good segue into, um, again, what Mark Houghton was trying to get at with you, which is your gift and tapping into your true self. And I think he was trying to tell you that, you know, now what you're doing with the podcast and sharing these these stories of these people who had similar experiences with the dreaming and and, you know, more inspiration and trying to help other people and to increase the the planet's vibrational escrow. Really, we're all you know, that's what I get from you. And that's what I'm trying to do, too, man. I want to I want all of us to rise up 
you know, um, talk a little bit about how to identify your gift and how to tap into your true self. Mm. So for myself, I, well, can you, sorry, I don't know if you're going to want to edit this part, but can you, can you rephrase the question? Yeah, or, or, yeah totally. So yeah. I'm really interested in the idea of the gift, right? Because I believe that we all have a gift. And on a couple of your podcasts, I've, I've heard, and even in your intros, you talk about, you know, this drive, this idea that you have inside you to create this podcast and to share these stories of other winners and these other compelling, like compelling stories of not just winners, but people. And Mark Houghton was trying to tell you that you have identified your gift through this podcast. Likewise, I, I feel like I have, I'm, I'm starting to, right? I'm starting to tap in to my gift, which is connecting with others and, and doing a very similar thing, which is like, you know, trying to find sources of inspiration around me so that I can increase all of our inspiration, right? But it's starting with myself. But I think of it as a gift and I think of it as tapping into my true self. So I was hoping you could kind of like make that relatable to you and what you're doing. Yeah, well, I feel that I strongly believe that, that we are all connected and I'm constantly trying to constantly trying to improve my gift, learn and achieve. And I believe that there are no obstacles. There are things to overcome, but I believe that for my gift, I mean, I believe that anybody practically can accomplish just about anything. And through prayer and meditation and belief, and I, as you mentioned, surrounding yourself with other people that are, that are mentors or that where you want to be in life can be very, very helpful. And if you do believe in that we vibrate on certain levels, which I do believe that, I mean, we actually do. If you look at the quantum physics yeah. of it, we're all yeah. these little tiny little molecules just because it seems like there's a space between here and here. It doesn't mean between the camera, between the microphone that I'm speaking into right now and, and between myself, there are all these little things that you can't <laughs> subatomic part. It goes way down mm -hmm. into these little particles and molecules. And we are literally the same composition, the whole universe, this whole planet. We're the same. We're made up of the same stuff. If you want to get into it on that level. And so I've always in different, I say always, but within the past few years and throughout a good portion of my life, I've intentionally tried to tap into understanding what our true reality is and understanding that we're not just what we necessarily sense or see at any given moment. We're part of something greater and just because you can't see or sense or hear something doesn't mean it's not happening. And if you can, maybe, you know, if you have a dream about something and then it happens or, you know, a really common thing, for example, is if you're thinking about someone and they send you a text or you get a phone call. I mean, that's very common that I believe that we are all connected. And I just am very open minded and very, very much interested in that sort of thing and want to pursue it. And I, I, I'll let, I don't want to keep you, but I did a, an animation a few years ago called The Cave, an adaptation of Plato's allegory in clay. And it's an adaptation of Plato's allegory of the cave. It's a very famous tale where there's these prisoners that are chained to a cave. 
and their whole reality are these shadows that are cast upon a wall in front of them. And one day, that's all they know. That's the whole meaning. That's their whole world are these shadows. And that's what they know. And one day a prisoner is released and he sees that these shadows are actually shadows and they're being cast from a fire and people and animals and objects that are going by the fire, casting these shadows onto the wall. And he understand, he sees this whole new reality. So he goes back to tell the others, the other prisoners and they don't believe him and they think he's crazy and he's chastised and I think that is a very good analogy to it. It just, I believe that there's so much more going on than we can necessarily sense most people anyway, with their normal senses. And if you want to pursue your gift or if you want to tap into more of our subcon your subconscious or the super conscious which i believe that we're all connected to if you want to get into any of that then you can just pursue it it's fascinating it's so interesting and you i think you'll really be astonished once you start to do that yeah man yeah i i think you know the sense that i get that your gift is is you're you are helping people tap into what you just said through the idea of winning the lottery like myself you know like i i want to win you know i but but it's not just about the manifestation of the money that's part of it for sure but it's 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 the freedom it's this um this limitlessness that is already there like you're talking about right so i just appreciate you for for helping to package that idea so that it becomes relatable so that we can all be the best versions of ourselves, really. I mean, that's that's the goal. I mean, having millions of dollars is great. And I, I it's a goal of mine. But the real goal, once I have those millions, is to be the best version of myself on a consistent basis. Yeah, absolutely. And happiness, I think, is, is so important. And there are some pe very wealthy people that are extremely unhappy. So it's yeah. not necessarily winning the lottery isn't necessarily going to make people happy once the exhilaration wears off. It, it does. I mean, it can ease the stress of having to work a job you don't want to work, which is huge. And in that sense, it can help make you happier, but it's not the end all. I believe that for most of the lottery winners I've ever met, they become, and for myself is that people become a larger version of themselves. Right. So I was into journalism and, interviewing people and spirituality and all these things way before I won the lottery. It just, I believe that you become a larger version of, of yourself and yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Um, Timothy, this has been awesome. Uh, I just have really two more things. Um, you just touched on it, but you know, fulfillment, you know, what does fulfillment mean to you? I, I believe you just mentioned happiness. Is there anything else that comes to mind when I say that word fulfillment? Uh, well, yeah, definitely happiness. I, I believe that you, that happiness really, really matters. And so does empathy and gratitude for everything in your life. You know, if you have health, gratitude for health. If you have a roof over your head, gratitude for that. If you have mm -hmm. friends, gratitude for that. People love you, gratitude for that. If you, whatever you have going for you, just be very, very grateful and cherish every moment is, is my belief. Yeah, bro. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Bro, what a great talk that we just had. Um, before we go, Timothy, do a plug for your podcast. Um, your podcast is awesome. So I'll, like I said, I'm going to link it here, but talk, not just do a plug, but just do a quick little recap of the learning that you've done. Because for me, you know, running a podcast is opened up my world. I get to meet with people like yourself, um, which this conversation has been an absolute pleasure to have and i would love to have you back for another round two sometime um but for those 
people out there who might be listening, um, tell them about how podcasting has helped you grow and how it continues to help you grow. And yeah, do a plug for your own podcast. Sure. No, thank you very much, Aaron. I really appreciate it. So people can find it on, I mean, you can easily find it if you just Google Timothy Schultz YouTube, it, it will come up, but I think it's tim- youtube.com slash C slash Timothy Schultz. But anyway, if you just Google, it's probably the easiest way, but I do interview people that I find fascinating. And some of these people happen to be other lottery winners or people that have come into sudden wealth and sudden fame because I find it very cathartic and very interesting to speak to other people who have experienced that. And everyone, everyone's experience is different, of course. And if you're talking about the lottery, for example, where you live, how much you win, who you are as a person, all of these things really can change how the lottery affects your life. But it's one of the biggest things that's ever happened to me. So I find it very, very interesting to meet other people that are into that, that have experienced that. In addition, though, I'm also very much into these topics that we've been speaking about, visualization, possible precognition, all these types of things are so fascinating to me. So I love interviewing people on those types of topics as well. And then when I find a lottery winner that also has had these types of experiences, that makes it even more fulfilling because it does happen to other people. I have I know at least two other lottery winners that dreamt about it before it happened and some others that visualized it, a couple that strongly believe in the law of attraction and a couple that I've interviewed anyway. I know there are many more in the media if you, if you research it, but it's very, very interesting. It's, it's so interesting. And so I, I just gained so much satisfaction out of it. I just love interviewing people. It's my dream. I'm, a, I'm obsessed with it. Like I have this burning desire to just, I love meeting people. I love interviewing people and I love inspiring people as well. If I can through, through telling stories that are true and uplifting because it's not always uplifting. I mean, life is life, but it's, I just believe people are capable of incredible things and it's just so satisfying to, to interview people. And I'm sure you probably find find it similar. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. Timothy Schultz, man, thank you so much for making some time today. Uh, this has been uh, a, an amazing conversation. I can't wait to listen back to it. And um, I'm just going to say this now. I will be a guest on your podcast one day. I'm saying uh, I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> I, I, Hope, hopefully with a, a winning ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I look forward to it. I, I, I can see that happening, Aaron. <laughs> cool. Yeah, That's great. That's definitely. great. I'll keep, um, yeah, I'll keep the seat warm. <laughs> yeah, great. That's great. So uh, thanks again, Timothy, for anyone listening. Like I said, I'll link the, I'll link Timothy's podcast here. Uh, please like subscribe and share this podcast. And uh, thank you all for being a fan of, of, our, of my show. And I appreciate it. Once again, my name is Aaron Wexler. This is Timothy Schultz. And uh, thanks again, Timothy. We'll see you all soon. Yeah, thank you so much, Aaron. You're welcome. This episode is brought to you by DAF Global. If you're looking to start a podcast or you have a podcast and you're looking for editing services, hit up my guys, Oliver and Garrett at DAF Global. They're awesome. They help me with this podcast and they take care of all kinds of different services like editing and audio enhancement. And they're great to work with. They're also offering a 10% discount to all within the game listeners. So hit my guys up at DAF Global on Instagram and also on their website, www.dafglobal.co.uk.